make sure you don't get away. <laughs> I wanted to pick up for those that went with us. <laughs> With those that went with us to Joppa this morning, remember Cornelius, he was here, he was a Roman centurion, an officer of a hundred, and God had worked in his heart, he, he loved the Lord even though he didn't know the Lord, the, the angel of the Lord speaks to him to send to Joppa for a man named Peter who was thinking he's staying inside the town's house, for those of you that didn't go on our morning hike, we, we covered that part of the story, but they come back here to Caesarea. So in Acts chapter 10, it says the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. And, and as Peter was coming, <coughs> Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter lifted him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. As he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Now, very likely this was the first time Peter ever was in the house of a gentleman. And remember the vision that the Lord gave him while he slept. A sheep coming down with all these unclean animals. And the Lord telling Peter to rise, kill, and eat. And Peter says what we can never say in the same sentence. No. Not so, Lord. You can't say not and Lord in the same sentence. Now, I want to tell you why this is so important. We're here today because of this event. Because it is at this time that the door of salvation is open to the Gentiles. And so he goes to Cornelius' house, and as he talked with him, he went in and found many who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or to go to uh, uh, at one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean by that vision that he had. Therefore I came without objection as soon as I was sent. For I asked them, for what reason have you sent for me? God love this. Peter doesn't even realize he's supposed to preach the gospel to these people. They haven't even crossed his mind yet. And so they answered Cornelius and said, Four days ago I was fasting until this very hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood right before me in bright clothing. And he said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Therefore send to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon and Tanner by the sea. And when he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent you immediately, and you have been well to come. Now therefore, we are present before God to hear all the things that are commanded of God by you. Is that awesome? God working on both sides, eternity in his heart. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is the Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all of Judea, began from the Galilee after the baptism with John preached, how God had known that Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit and the power, who went about doing God good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all things which he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us, who ate and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and testify that it is he who has ordained God to be the judge of the living and dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sins. And I love this part. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit. Peter doesn't even give to the, get to the 
no, taken. He didn't. He had given the gospel, though. And he had told the people, it is by believing that you shall be saved. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. And as many as came with Peter because of the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that they should not be baptized who has just received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And then they asked him to stay a few days. This great Roman city. The Lord speaks to a Roman officer. Speaks in his heart. He sends to Joppa. Peter travels up the coast to be here, enters this Roman city with all kinds of pagan idols and statues. It was Rome away from Rome. He shares the gospel, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, just as it had happened on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell on the people that were listening, and they began to speak in tongues. They'd never heard of it. They'd never seen it began to speak in tongues, and then Peter said, can we forbid water baptism? I mean, it's obviously that God has chosen these people. Now, I want to tell you, Peter's going to get called on the carpet for this. That's why he took people with him and witnesses so that they could all see. And it's interesting because there's something else I think that we, we need to notice, that these people are saved, they're baptized in the Holy Spirit, then they're going to get water baptized. Later on in the book of Acts, we see where the Ephesians, they end up coming to the Lord, and, and, and uh, Peter baptized, or I mean, uh, the Apostle Paul by, by water baptizes them again after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what happened to me. I would say... Then about two months later, I got, or I was saved, and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit about a week after I got saved, and then I was baptized two months later. So here's the important thing for all of us. We, Jesus has told us that we are to ask our Heavenly Father to be baptized in this Holy Spirit. He's the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And he even says, which of you, if you have a son, and he asks for bread, are you going to give him a rock? If he asks for an egg, are you going to give him a scorpion? If he asks for a fish, are you going to give him a meal? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your heavenly Father, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So I'm going to ask Pastor Chris, and we can all join our hearts together. I don't have a mic, you guys, so I don't know if you want to come over here. Come I, I just, here, just come. I'll show you. So we're going to pray now. Pray's gonna, Chris is going to pray for us all to be baptized in the Holy Hold Spirit. Hold on before you bow your heads. <laughs> just as Daryl was telling that story, I was thinking of Herzl in the bus, and he was saying about how the Roman Rome provided the, the soldiers for Herod the Great here. So somewhere along the line, there was just this young boy little boy and his dad was coming to be a soldier and he grew up here and eventually that was the guy that God used to bring the gospel to the Gentiles and so maybe he came as an older soldier or a young man and maybe he was born here and grew up here and then became a soldier and eventually a captain and a, and a ruler and kind of just strange the way God put things together you know well let's pray and let's just ask God to touch hey rather than uh, bow your head and close your eyes we never see that in the Bible it's a yeah, it's a great way right. to pray, this but is... let's lift our eyes right now and check out the ocean and yeah. check out the heavens as we pray. Father God, we come before you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, so much, Father, for this place. We thank you, Father, that you brought Peter to this place to graft us in, God, to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And we're so thankful, Jesus, that we get to be a part, that we do get to bear fruit for you, God. And the Bible says that by our fruit, they will know you're my disciples. And that, um, Lord, so I pray that you put fruit in each one of our lives, God. I pray, Father, that each one of our hearts would be broken for you. And that we just fall so much more in love, in love with you at every one of these stations today. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.